Guten Tag, my babies. It's your girl T, aka the Nappy Headed Jojoba, and I've got a wash day routine video for you guys that I've been doing quite a bit lately. As many of us with Afro textured hair know, sometimes our wash day routines can get more than a little bit involved. Too involved, I dare say. I'm guilty of it too, with the pre-poo and the detangling and the deep conditioning and the black tea rinse and this and the muds and the so forth and the so on. If I don't check myself, I can wind up with a wash day routine that's got like a 20 step process. And quite frankly, it's completely unnecessary. And more to the point, I straight up don't have the time for all of that. So lately, and in particular, this was definitely facilitated by me chopping off about half of my length back in January. I've kind of gotten a lot more back to basics with a lot of my wash days where I really just do the essentials. And I've noticed that with just a few key steps done in an efficient and practical way, and also using products that I know are effective for my hair, I've managed to get my wash day to not take all goddamn day. It's probably not showing you guys anything you haven't seen before. It really is a, hey, remember how it used to be just like wash, condition, move on with your life? That's kind of all we really need to do. It's nice to add in extra steps and treatments and you know things like that when you want to, but it really isn't always necessary. So this is the routine I've been doing on weeks where I've washed my hair relatively recently, you know, within the past week or two, and I just need to refresh, maybe get some shed hairs out, get my hair detangled, and move on with my life. I don't wanna spend a whole day in my head. So the night before, I had slapped a bunch of coconut oil in my hair, which is usual. If I'm not using my homemade pre-poo concoction, which you can see in this video, I still do use that, but I don't always use that because sometimes I just don't need it. The night before this wash day, I just went ahead and did some regular regular coconut oil because I will not wash my hair unless I have pre-pooed with coconut oil overnight. It doesn't have to be anything time consuming. I literally just ran some coconut oil through my hair before I went to bed, put on a plastic cap, and then the next day I was ready to go. You'll see that I'm shampooing with a moisturizing shampoo. This one is by Shea Moisture. I picked it up off the clearance rack, as you might be able to see from these stickers on the bottle. But I've used this shampoo two or three times and I actually really like it. I find it to be a pretty moisturizing shampoo and uh, it feels rather creamy in my hair and it's got enough slip to it that I can actually detangle here, as you can see in some of these clips. Now remember, this is a wash day routine that is meant to be as efficient as possible, so I'm very careful and thoughtful about every step of it. I'm using this moisturizing shampoo, and as you can see, I hold the length of my hair taut as I'm agitating my fingertips on my scalp to lift any dirt, debris, and product buildup. This is how I always handle my hair when I'm shampooing it, but I just wanted to point that out because holding my hair taut like that helps to keep it from bunching up and tangling as I'm kind of scrubbing around on my scalp with my fingertips. And you'll also see that I've got this applicator tip on my shampoo bottle to make it really easy and quick to get the shampoo onto my scalp. I don't know how many times I've heard people say on YouTube that shampoo is for your scalp and not your hair, and don't put any shampoo on the length of your hair. I disagree with that completely. I do agree that shampoo is primarily for your scalp, but to not wash the length of your hair and just let the runoff from your scalp do that job for you makes zero sense to me simply because to me that's like washing your upper body and not washing your legs and being like, well, the suds from my upper body are washing my legs, so my legs are clean now. No, they ain't. So just like I wouldn't skip washing the lower half of my body in the shower, I do make sure I drag some of that lather from the shampoo on my scalp down the length of my hair all the way to my ends to make sure that I'm removing any product buildup and dirt from the length of my hair. This finger detangling that I'm doing while the shampoo is in my hair is because this particular shampoo allows me to do that, which is why I selected it for this wash day. Whenever I'm trying to do my super efficient wash day routine, I will always make sure I pick a shampoo that has enough slip to it that I can do some finger detangling because one of the main things you'll notice throughout this video is that I'm constantly finger detangling. Rather than having sort of like a dedicated finger detangling session at the beginning of my wash day, I'm just finger detangling throughout the process of everything else that I'm doing so that it's just kind of a search and destroy for tangles concurrent with me shampooing my hair, applying my deep conditioner, uh, twisting up my hair at the end, all that, so that 
I'm getting the tangles out as I go along without having to spend separate time detangling, if that makes any sense. It's not necessarily as thorough as a dedicated detangling session, but because this is more of a wash day routine to tide me over because I know I've already kind of done a wash day recently or I'm going to be doing another one again soon, it's not critical that I get out every single tangle from my hair. As I'm detangling in the shower, I always just stick my shed and broken hairs to the wall of my shower to reduce how many are going down the drain and clogging my pipes. And yes, I acknowledge that some of that hair is inevitably uh, broken hair. I used to find it very disheartening when I would watch other people's natural hair videos and they would talk about how, oh, I don't get any broken hair. I just have these four shed hairs from my entire wash day. And it made me feel like my hair was just busted and inadequate. But realistically, unless you've got superhuman hair, which I've seen some superhuman hair here on YouTube, I don't have that. I've got a regular, regular head of hair. My hair breaks sometimes, you know, just throughout mechanical damage and regular handling. It's normal for me and it's okay. And if that happens to you, I want you to know you're okay too. It's just that some of us don't have this superhuman hair. If you notice your breakage increasing or getting to a point where you're actually noticing it when you look at your hair or um, bald patches even, that's another issue. But it is perfectly normal to have a small amount of breakage throughout your regular handling of your hair and your wash day processes. Within this routine, I shampoo my hair only once and then after that I follow it up with a co-wash. I'm not going to get into the particular co-wash that I'm using because it is by Shea Moisture's Professional Line, which has been discontinued. But anyway, unlike with the shampoo, I focus the co-wash more on the length of my hair to lift any remaining product buildup or dirt off of my strands rather than my scalp. I feel like at this point my scalp is quite clean because I could feel it. And I'm also using the co-wash as a way to sort of prime slash precondition my hair for the deep conditioning step that will come next because I don't bother with an instant or in shower, one of those like leave in two minutes and rinse out type of conditioners. I don't really use conditioners like that, period, but I especially don't use them in this wash day routine because again, the aim here is to get this wash day to be as quick as possible. To be honest with you, I generally have co-washed less than once a year for the past several years. I don't believe co-washing is all of that useful and there wasn't generally a place for it within my wash day routines because I do shampoo, but it has been fitting in nicely with this particular wash day routine because I find that moisturizing shampoo plus co-wash once of each on each section seems to be the perfect amount of cleansing slash prepping my hair for the next step. So I just rinse that co-wash out of my hair, twist it, and then move on to the next section. And then once I'm done with all of my sections, I go ahead and do an apple cider vinegar rinse, which I didn't realize was not caught on camera because I ran out of memory. So my camera cut off while I was doing my ACV rinse, but pretend that I'm doing it here. There, you get the idea. Pretend there was apple cider vinegar and water in there in a four to one ratio, and pretend I skeeted that all over my hair and you get the point. After the apple cider vinegar rinse, I do usually run my head under the shower with some cool water really quickly just to rinse out the ACV. And then I put my hair into a microfiber turban towel just so that it isn't dripping wet with water anymore. On this particular wash day, I used the Be Mine Be Beautiful Deep Conditioner. To the Be Mine Conditioner, I added two tablespoons of my Green Beauty Real Protein Treatment. This is basically just hydrolyzed wheat protein in liquid form, as well as about a tablespoon of my Basvata oil from Lakshmi's Cupboard. I've talked about both this and the real protein treatment way too many times to get into it again here, so I will not repeat myself because I'm sure I will be boring my ride or dies. Long story short, both of those products are staples for me. The reason I went with an Ayurvedic oil infusion is again, efficiency. Rather than using a powder or powder mix, of Ayurvedic products and herbs, I decided to use an oil because it's much easier to rinse from my hair at the end. If it's an oil infusion, I don't really have to worry about any clumps of powder or debris being left in my hair because I didn't rinse adequately once I'm done. So an oil is definitely a much easier way to work Ayurveda into my hair routine, which I do on pretty much every wash day. I like to have some sort of Ayurvedic aspect to my wash day, every single wash day. And this is just an easier, more efficient way to do it for me rather than using a powder, even though a powder is probably a little bit more potent. So I mix all that stuff up, applied my deep conditioner, as you do. Pretty standard stuff. I think we all know how to put deep conditioner in our hair at this point. But this particular conditioner, I was really impressed with this Be Mine Deep Conditioner. It really 
melted into my strands. I know that's something that people say a lot about hair products when they like them, but I've never really, I, or at least I can't recall off the top of my head, a conditioner that applied to my hair so easily. I really, it, it went in so easily that I didn't have to pull apart my hair and really find those pockets that didn't get product in the same way that I usually do. It seemed to just be able to kind of like penetrate into the section in a way I've never experienced before and find all those strands that didn't have product because it just smoothed through my hair so easily. So not only was this conditioner great for this routine because it was so quick to apply, but I also didn't need to use a crap ton of it. I measured out what I considered to be a normal amount of conditioner for my length, density, and heavy handedness. And I still had about half of the mix left over when I was done, which is pretty impressive. Once the conditioner is in my hair, I just throw on a plastic cap and apply my heat source of choice for that day, whether it's my hot head cap or just my uh, hooded dryer, whatever is more convenient for me on that particular day. And I'll use heat for anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes. Never all that long, because again, this is supposed to be a wash day that doesn't take all damn day. I've changed angles here for this portion where I'm rinsing the conditioner out of my hair because I'm trying to figure out the best camera setup for me to not flood my bathroom with water from the shower. I was not successful on this day either. This setup actually ended up being worse than my normal setup, which you saw at the beginning. So I think we'll probably be sticking with that one. But in any event, we're closer here so you can see a bit better what I'm doing as I'm rinsing. You can see that as I'm rinsing out the conditioner, again, I'm finger detangling some more, getting out more shed hair, and I'm keeping my hair under the running water as much as possible to keep my strands elongated because it helps to speed up the detangling process and it helps the hair stop from sort of get drying and bunching up on, its, on itself when I'm twisting and braiding. So I use the water pressure from the shower head to just kind of keep my hair stretched as I'm rinsing, obviously, and then also as I'm actually twisting and or braiding my hair. One thing I've also been doing lately is separating the perimeter of my hair. So that's the edges in the front of my head um, and making that its own separate twist that I do quite loosely. That's because I have struggle edges, as many of you guys know, and I get plenty of rude comments about it, which I never even used to be self-conscious about my edges, but the rude comments on YouTube have definitely started plucking my nerves at this point. Whether it's passive aggressive or just classic aggressive, if I get someone saying something out of pocket about my edges, I block them immediately. I actually really hate that YouTube has made me self-conscious about something that I was not self-conscious about before, but in any event, I am trying to be a little bit more gentle with my edges than I already am, and that's led me to experimenting with leaving my edges out of the sort of main sections in my head. And this helps me to reduce the amount of tugging on them so that they're not being incorporated into a larger section, say the first uh, two quarters of my head, like one on each side. They're not being pulled into that. They're sort of left out on their own, very loose twists in the front. And I just did one on either side. And then behind my edges there, I do just a regular braid with a goody ouchless barrette at the roots to help keep the roots stretched. I tend to get the most tangles at the roots of my hair. So rather than using a ponytail, which I think would be a little bit too rough and harsh and just not as gentle on my hair, I like these goodie barrettes to basically get my roots nice and taut. And then after that, I will braid my hair under the running water, twisting the last inch or so of my hair so that it's easier for me to take down when I'm ready to take the braids down. And that's something I pretty much always do and always have done is if I'm doing a braid, I always tw uh, twist the last inch, inch and a half of my hair because it's just a lot easier to unravel the braids when I'm ready to do so. And I do the same thing in the back. I make a bigger braid sort of for the more central part of my hair, use the goodie barrette at the roots to keep them nice and taut and help uh, stretch them as well as prevent them from uh, getting more tangled at the roots. Braid under the running water, twist the last inch, inch and a half. And then in the nape of my hair back there in my kitchen, I went ahead and did another loose twist because I also get a lot of breakage in the nape of my hair, similar to how I get in the front where my edges are. So I'm just trying to really baby those areas and be more gentle with them. Basically keeping them out of all the drama I'm doing with the rest of my hair. And with all the sections, I just set the ends on my, my Curl Squad rollers from Protective Princess right here on YouTube. These are great because the rollers are made of silicone, so I don't have to worry about them absorbing any water and I can really 
uh, actually use the running water to keep my ends sort of stretched out and lengthened as I'm actually rolling them onto the roller under the shower head. So I do twists for the edges in the front and my kitchen in the back and then braids in the center, mainly because braids help stretch the hair better, but twists are more gentle on the hair. So I wanna be as gentle as possible around the perimeter of my hair. And then where my hair is a little bit more durable, I can use the braids to get a more effective stretch. Once my hair is twisted and braided in the shower with my goodie barrettes on the roots to stretch them, I get out, pat my hair dry again, and then on top of those already installed braids and twists, I just pat my favorite moisturizer in and just kind of squeeze it into my twists and braids. And believe it or not, it does effectively moisturize my hair. I used to be worried that if I didn't take down my section and apply it to loose hair, it wouldn't effectively moisturize my hair. But after doing this routine for quite a few times now, I've noticed that it totally works and it works great. And then I just leave those rollers and barrettes in overnight so my hair can dry a little bit. And my hair probably won't be completely dry if I were to actually unravel the braids the next day. But by the next day, I usually am ready to take out the rollers and barrettes at the least. And I'll just leave the twists and braids intact until I'm ready to either put my hair into a style or I'll just rock a turban, a hat, or a hair hat. This entire routine from start to finish doesn't take me long at all. It only takes me about an hour and a half, which an hour and a half is actually a pretty short amount of time for me to do a complete wash day. As you can see, this is no revolutionary wash day technique by any stretch of the imagination. It's basically just cleanse, condition, twist, or braid. But by eliminating a lot of the extras that we sometimes feel like we need to do but don't really, it allows me to stay on top of my hair, prevent tangles from getting worse, which overall makes detangling quicker. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful. I just wanted to show you guys what I've been doing on my wash days lately because this routine has allowed me to wash my hair a lot more frequently, which is really nice, especially since I do work out and with sweating and stuff, it's nice to not to have to worry about setting aside an entire day, which means you often have to postpone your wash day longer than you might like to. I can do this pretty much on the fly as long as I remember to put the coconut oil in my hair the night before. That is it for today's video. I hope you guys are having a marvelous weekend and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye. That's a, that's a nappy headed hose there, I'm gonna tell you that now. <laughs>